Good morning. Appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. I'd like to welcome you being with us. We have 66 devices uh, tuning in this morning. Today's lesson uh, we will get to in a minute. Let's hit our memory verse. I'm, I'm anxious today. So Romans 5, 8. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Can I really have it all? If you were given a magic wand and you could use that magic wand and create whatever you wanted to for your life, uh, what would you wish for? Of course, this is, you know, in this life, things that you might wish for. Uh, It might be better health. I'd like to be healthy. I'd like to feel good. Uh, It might be money. I'd like to have more money, lots of money, loads of money, Um, and I would do things with money. It might be success Uh, I'd like to achieve, or fame. How would you like to be famous? How would you like, when people see you in public, they they come up and talk to you, and they're just just falling over you, and and, and they want to shake your hand, or they want you to sign something, or here, can I take a picture with you, famous. Maybe a relationship. Maybe if you could wave magic wand, you would improve a relationship with someone or find that special someone. Relationship. Or happiness, which really all the the things I listed, uh, ultimately it all, you know, it boils down to, well, I'd like to be happy, and I think maybe this would do it. Ironically, everything I listed is temporary. Everything I listed will fall short. Everything, all those things will fail you at some time or another. Uh, And if you don't think so, just live a little longer or talk to someone that's old uh, without calling them old. Tell them you think they're really wise and I want to talk to you. Pick your brain for a minute. You know, has anything, any of those things been ultimately fulfilling? They're just, they're just, that was it. Man, if I was just missing that in my life. What about spiritual blessings? We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1 today. We're going to look at this chapter, a great chapter about blessings. And Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing. If you are a Christian, a faithful Christian... You already have every spiritual blessing. You have the best God can give, and He's given it. You have, first and foremost, salvation from sin and from hell. If you're a Christian, you have salvation from sin. The the two greatest enemies that we have are two greatest dangers, sin and hell. We have sanctification, which is a fancy church word, which means God's changing us to make us holy. God's working on you. You have that. You have the comfort and help of the Holy Spirit. You have the power of God working in your life. You have a mediating Savior who understand what, understands what it's like to be weak in the flesh. You have a family of believers here that you can worship with, that you can serve with, that can encourage you when you need it. You have the hope of eternal life in heaven. Our greatest fear normally for humans, our greatest fear is death. What do you have after death? If you're a Christian, well, heaven. I mean, heaven, what's heaven? It's heavenly. We we don't have enough words for what heaven will be. That's what's in our future for the Christian. Um, The New Century Version translates Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Everything. Verse 4. Even as, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. Do you feel holy, blameless? Do you feel sinless? Do you feel faultless? Or do you feel guilty, dirty, ashamed? Tarnished, damaged, broken? Did you know that all along, 
since the beginning, before God made anything, God wanted you to feel forgiven. That was God's plan from before the beginning. God's plan for His children, the church, us, the bride of Christ, is that we would feel forgiven. And I think most of us, now in your brain, uh, you know, you just evaluated that. You have an answer. Do you feel holy or do you feel broken? Do you feel forgiven or do you feel at fault, tarnished? I would venture to say most of us feel guilty, sinful, because we know and we're ashamed of our sins. But God paid the price. God gave us grace through Jesus that was just because Jesus paid the penalty so we could feel forgiven. Why do we not feel forgiven? What do we want God to do that He hasn't done? That's what God's trying to give us, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. That's been His plan from before the beginning. Reading on, it says, In love He predestined us. A lot of times people get uh, really you know, down a wrong path on predestined. It just means God pre-planned. He predetermined. He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. It's not that God predetermined who He was going to save and who He wasn't. He predetermined what he was going to do with those who would respond to, to the gospel. But for us to be adopted as sons and daughters, of course, children through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. If you read down to verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Now, that's the, I was talking earlier about why do we not feel holy? Well, because we, we know our sins. God wants us to feel forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace which He lavished upon us. When uh, my girls were younger, you know, they would periodically want to do something that they, they needed Dad's help with. They needed, you know, they want to go to the park. Dad, will you take us to the park? And I would, I would do that some, and then sometimes I would not feel like taking them to the park. I'm, Dad's tired today, you know. Well, Dad, we want to go to the park. Well, Dad wants to sit right here. Um, uh, there's, a, there's football on. Dad would like to watch football. We want to go to the park. And so sometimes I would, I would agree to go. All right, get your stuff. Let's go. Get in the car. I mean, I'm not the only parent to ever have that attitude about doing something for their children. Okay? Let's go. Get in the car. Get your stuff. Don't have all day. Um, Contrast that with something that I, I uh, a few years ago when Liz was my oldest, when she was a junior in high school, uh, the Watkins had extra tickets to an OU game when Notre Dame came to town, which is a pretty that was a pretty neat deal. The historic pro, you know program Notre Dame, the Golden Helmets is it's uh, college football at its finest, and so I took Liz um, with me and with them that day we. Uh, went, had a great time, and for her to experience that, I wanted that. And then when Sydney was a senior in high school, I planned a day, and got tickets, and her and I went and uh, watched the OU game. And then next month, I'm going to take Abby. And so it's something I've done with, with each daughter, because um, I, I want them to, that's something I can do with them. I like it, and they would enjoy it, and so... Um, in fact, when I, when I got tickets to take Abby, now I like to get, I got great tickets. And when I say great, here's how great. 50-yard uh, line, but not down close to the players. No, no. That's bench seating. That's crowded. That's hot. Might be hot. Not when we're going. It should not be too hot or too cold. That's on purpose. Um, but bench seats, I mean, that's crowded. We're in the upper deck. Upper, we're in the third deck. Love it. Third deck, uh, the concessions are not long, and the seats have a cup holder for my drink and a chair back. It's nice up there. Now, you got to walk forever to get up there. A lot of people don't want to sit up there. That's where I love to be, up there where it's not so crowded. I can see everything. I can put my drink here. got my seat back. I'm comfortable. I really like to watch it from my recliner at home. But I got those tickets, and I, I was anxious to tell Abby, she was at church camp um, 
she doesn't even have her phone. She's off the grid at camp, which is so weird. Uh, and it's, it's anyway, it's, uh, I couldn't even communicate with her, but I was excited. When God gave us Jesus, he didn't do it reluctantly. He didn't say, all right, get, all right, here, I'll do it. I'll give you Jesus. Or here, I'll, I'll give you grace. I know you need grace. You can't do it on your own. You have failed time and time again. Uh, fine, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. That's not how God did it. God planned before the beginning that he would pay the price with Jesus, the highest price, and that he would give us grace and not just a little grace. Grace upon grace, lavished. God loves to be gracious. He loves to be gracious. And because Jesus, everything is through Jesus, because Jesus paid the price, God, it's paid. And he loves to be gracious. He lavishes it upon us. If we read down further, let's go to verse 11. It says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined, which means pre-planned. A few years ago, uh, Stephanie and I were celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary, and we were planning to take a trip to Eureka Springs, which is where uh, we honeymooned. And so we were planning to take that trip, and right, but she was looking at places we would stay in Eureka Springs, and right before she booked one of those, I said, hey, let me, let me choose. I want to choose because uh, I want to surprise you with, you know, where we're staying. And so she said, all right, fine. Unbeknownst to her, the whole time I had been planning a surprise trip to Key West, which is where she was born. Her dad was in the Navy. She was born in Key West, and so I, I had planned this trip. I had, uh, we were going to fly into Miami, which we did, and uh, rent a convertible. I wanted to rent a, a convertible Mini Cooper, uh, and uh, so we couldn't get one of those, but we, uh, we got a convertible Volkswagen Beetle, like a late model, and it was just perfect for what we were doing. It was so much fun, so we flew into Miami, got the car, and we were going to drive to Key West. We, we, we drove halfway and uh, uh, stayed at a place halfway. Our, our, our room um, opened the, the hotel room, and it looks out on the ocean. It's waterfront. Planned the whole thing and didn't tell her until two days before. And two days before, I said, you need to pack different clothes. This was February 4th. And uh, in Key West, the weather's nice in February. It's horrible here. It is so nice there. Um, and so, surprised her with the trip. We had so much fun. Have you ever thought how excited God has been from eternity before he created creation he planned that he would save us and take us to heaven with him. God has been planning in heaven for us. That's our inheritance. And God has been planning that from before creation, before time. How excited has God been to tell us about our inheritance? He predestined, he preplanned that. And then reading on, according to the purpose of him who works all things, according to the counsel of his will. Now this phrase, God, so God works all things according to the counsel of his will. What that means is God is in control. Do you ever look at the world around you and get discouraged? Raise your hand. A lot of hands. A lot of hands in this section. Um, the older you get, the more discouraged we tend to get about our world. And we see what's going on and we shake our heads. Do you ever worry about this world? Yeah, your hands weren't so quick to go up there. You know where the preacher's headed. God is in control of this world. It is a fallen world. 
Satan is the prince of this world. There is a lot of sin and deceit in this world, a lot of heartache in this world, but who's in control of it? God is. God is. He's running this world. He's allowing things to happen in His will. Now, we, we struggle with why sometimes, but what we don't need to struggle is, with is, what are we going to do? What we're going to do is walk with God, hold His hand. He's going to run things. He's going to control this world. You ever had a kid interject into adult things and they're worrying about adult things? And you're like, listen, you, you worry about your kid things. The adults are going to worry about the adult things. God's the adult. His will. He's working all things according to His will. And we need to find peace in that. God's trying to bless us and He said, listen, I'll run the world. You just walk with me in faith. Do we struggle with what to do? I mean, do we, are we confused about what to do? No. We just worry about all this that we can't control. Well, who's going to control it? God is. And we'll leave that to Him. Verse 17, let's go down to verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened so that you may... Can you tell all this is building up to... You need to know something so that you may know what is the hope. What is it God so desperately wants us to know? He wants us to know about hope. Hope in what? Hope in heaven. Hope is about the future. It's not about the present, not the present reality. We have blessings in the present, but that's not what hope is. Hope is what we don't have yet. Heaven. Hope in heaven. If you had an earthly inheritance coming, earthly, money, and in 10 years, 20 years, you were going to be rich, I mean filthy rich, I mean ridiculously rich, what would you think about that? No doubt you would have quite a bit of thoughts on what you're going to do with all that money. With money you can buy things. What am I going to buy? How am I going to spend all that money? What am I going to do with that? Would you be excited about it? If it's in 10 years, and that's quite a ways out, 10 years, but you're going to be filthy rich, would you be excited? Would you think about it? In the future, we don't know when, but when the faithful Christian dies, they are rich. God is sharing all of heaven with us. And heaven, now how do you compare heaven to earthly riches? By the way, love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Don't forget that. How, how rich will we be in heaven? What will we have in heaven? How great will heaven be? We don't know. And maybe we struggle because we don't know. But the truth is, God says, if you only knew if you only knew what's waiting on you, if you only knew, you would think about it more. You would be excited. You would be looking forward to it. You would say, you know what? I've got good things down here, but man, wait till, wait till there. That's what we have to look forward to. Then, let's look at this next part. What are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints? What are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints. Now this phrase, well my question for you is, whose inheritance is that? His glorious inheritance in the saints. Most every major word-for-word -word translation translates it, His glorious inheritance in the saints. Not for the saints, in the saints. Not their inheritance, his inheritance. Whose inheritance is that talking about? It's talking about God's inheritance, which is an odd thought. What is God inheriting? The saints. What does God get after Judgment Day when the saints, when the bride of Christ goes to heaven? What does God get? 
He gets the church. His creation. Now the angels worship Him now, but the angels were created in heaven. They didn't choose God like we did. They didn't choose God. Now He chose us first. He loved us first. All that. Understand that. But we put our faith and trust in God through Jesus. Don't we? Is God looking forward to His saints? That's His inheritance. Let me ask you this. Grandchildren... Any grandchildren in here that get to go to grandma and grandpa's house, right? Raise your hand. We got some young people in here. We have a lot in Bible hour, but we have some. I'm going to speak to these right here. Do grandchildren like to go to grandma and grandpa's house? Be careful how you answer because some of them are sitting right beside you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they nodded their heads. So why do grandchildren love to go to grandparents' house? Well, there's different rules at grand, in grandma's house granddad's house there's different rules there they get spoiled is what they get they get spoiled and they get cherished now do grandparents look forward to grandchildren coming absolutely even though grandparents don't get spoiled what do grandparents get they get they get love they get the grandchildren they get to cherish what they cherish. Grandparents love when the grandkids come. That's how God feels. That's God's inheritance. God is looking for... You may not think you're very much, but God thought you were worth the price of His Son. Isn't that something? God cherishes you. He planned this from before time. And he's been looking forward to the day he could have you come to his house. And that's what he's preparing for. All right, verse 19. What is the immeasurable? So this is, still what, this is still for us to know. We're to know our hope, God's inheritance. Verse 19. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us? It's not against us. This isn't his judgment. This is his loving power. Toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. This can you tell this is God's powerful? I mean, immeasurable, greatness, power, great, might. I mean, how many more words do we want? Uh, we have a passage in Isaiah. Have you not known? This is chapter 40. Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Anyone here feel weak? Anyone here struggle? Like you don't, you don't know enough, understand enough, have enough power or control over the world around you. Things aren't going the way you want them to go. You don't have the strength or the energy, the passion. You don't have it. And God says, I got it. I will give it. The Bible says God will give us wisdom. Just ask. God says he'll give it. He promises. Ask, he'll give it. He won't ask questions. Just ask in faith. James chapter 1, and God will give wisdom. He will give help. He will support us with his strength. We have future hope and we have present help. And then to wrap it all up, verse 22. In Jesus, he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This chapter, it, it wraps up by saying God is powerful. If we back up a minute, God's power, if you look in verses 20 and 21, it says God is so powerful and his greatest showing of that was taking Jesus from the grave, which is the weakest we can be dead from the grave took Jesus and exalted him to the highest he could exalt him the right hand of God in heaven above everything that's what God's power can do I mean that's beyond what we don't even know what this other world is like heaven we just know this world God didn't raise him from the dead to be king of this world like over an earthly kingdom say here you can run this continent no he put him in heaven you're over all of it that's how powerful God is 
And then he wraps it all up by saying the, the church is the body of Christ. God is over everything. And you and I are the greatest thing on this planet. We are the humble bride of Christ. We have God's help here. And we have hope in the greatest inheritance where we're going. So, let me back up. Can we have it all? Can we have it all? If you're a Christian, you already have it all. Isn't that something? So if we will walk more by faith, we will look like we have it all. I don't mean prideful. I mean joyful. The world should be envious of Christians because they see in us, you guys have something. What is it? But we're walking too much by the flesh and our heads are hung low because we're struggling. Hold your head up. We need to show the world what we have and what they can have because it's, it is for everyone. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you would like prayers this morning, we'd love to stop and pray for you. If you are not ready to meet God in judgment, maybe you're not a faithful Christian, have never given your life to Christ. What? Well, What's holding you back? What are you waiting for? Let us help you with that. Come while we stand and sing. Into my heart.